I think our main use case right now is commercial contracting. Um, so yeah, you have sales contracts moving around all the time for large deals. And uh, yeah, lawyers need to review them on both sides oftentimes uh, to see if there are any, uh, you know, kind of red flags in there um, to adjust language to make sure that the contract um, is compliant to standard terms for the organization. Um, I think that's kind of our number one uh, use case right now. But we have people using us for all sorts of things. Synthesia. Yeah, I know uh, Rally's been doing some very exciting things using uh, synthetic media and uh, GPT-3. So uh, if you wanted to bring up the uh, your presentation and tell us about how uh, uh, the legal world is uh, starting to uh, experiment with this kind of technology. Yep. Uh, will do. Okay. Uh, showing okay. Yep. You got it. Perfect. Yep, there. Um, yeah. So we'll give a little bit of background and then we'll do a live demo uh, to show you exactly um, how our tool works. Um, yeah. We're a legal tech company called Rally. We've actually been around for about five years. Uh, yeah, I'm co-founder and CEO. I come from a technical and engineering background, but one of my co-founders is a lawyer. And uh, yeah, we've been always had a mission to kind of um, automate and streamline uh, business legal transactions. Um, and yeah, when we saw uh, large language models um, become good, and when we started playing with GPT-2 and GPT-3, um, we immediately kind of saw the opportunity uh, to use uh, this technology in legal. And um, yeah, that led us to launching uh, something called Spellbook. Um, so Spellbook is basically like a GitHub Copilot uh, for lawyers, um, or an AI Copilot for lawyers. Um, yeah, and, and really GitHub Copilot was the initial inspiration. So I'm sure your audience is, is very familiar with this uh, information already, but GitHub Copilot came out. Um, I remember uh, very well the first time I used it, and I was super skeptical as a programmer at first. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll go into a little bit more information for those who don't know, um, but GitHub Copilot, you know, uses GPT-3 and Codex um, to help programmers write code uh, more efficiently and to suggest, I mean, the primary function is to suggest uh, code to them. Um, and yeah, of course, GPT-3 and Codex have been trained on tons of code, as well as a huge portion of the internet, uh, books and Wikipedia and all that good stuff. And the result is a tool um, yeah, that helps you output code. And yeah, the first time I used it, um, I was super skeptical. I think both programmers and lawyers are trained skeptics who have to be able to spot issues. Um, so I was skeptical. And it out, the first time I used it, it output probably 20 lines of code that I thought were garbage. And I said, wow, this thing doesn't work. So this, this tech isn't quite there yet. And then 10 minutes later, I realized that that code was anticipating an issue that I hadn't thought about myself. And that was kind of the first time that I was... I felt outsmarted by AI, truly outsmarted. It was truly thinking 10 minutes ahead of me and had discovered a problem that I, I didn't see. And it had written kind of more robust code than what I was thinking of um, to, uh, to uh, deal with, mitigate that problem. Um, and at that moment was when we decided, okay, this, this has to exist for lawyers. This has to exist for contracts. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what Spellbook is. Um, you know, we're doing pretty much the exact kind of, kind of same thing for lawyers. Um, we focus on drafting. Yeah, so we also fine tune using legal documents um, in addition, and we use uh, GPT-3, we use some of Cohere's models, we use some of our own models in our pipeline as well. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, and yeah, we suggest language and contracts, uh, but we also help review contracts and provide insight. So. Uh, similar to something like chat, chat GPT, um, you can ask questions about documents, find missing clauses, unusual terms, aggressive terms, and things like that. Um, yeah, I think a demo would probably be the best way to show how it works. But any questions before that? No, please uh, keep going. This is, yeah, the, the evolution of uh, it is definitely, I think, something that's going to be uh, apparent in, uh, in other industries. So it's great to see it uh, starting here. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'll show uh, kind of a live uh, demo here. Just one second. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, basically a sales agreement, pretty standard kind of SaaS uh, order form. And you'll see Spellbook is here on the right, um, right where you know lawyers are typically working. I think that was something that was really important to us, not forcing them to change their workflow or to use like a new 
platform uh, or something like that. Um, and it can do kind of two different things. We can uh, select spells. So we have a number of these sort of preset spells like quick draft, directed draft, explain section, find missing clauses, do a full review, uh, data privacy review, and lots of others. Um, but you can also ask freeform questions like chat GPT, you know, like, you know, who are the parties in this contract or something like that. Um, each of these spells is actually a dedicated pipeline. So we're not just, this isn't just um, chat GPT. Um, each of these has a specific pipeline um, that tries its best to achieve the outcome that the user would be looking for. And this is really important in legal documents because they're so long. So we can't fit you know, the entire legal document typically into um, the token limit uh, for GPT-3 um, or for any other large language model for that matter. So we have to be able to cut the documents up, um, run uh, large language models against the portions, and then kind of recombine all that information um, in, in many cases. Um, but yeah, I'll show, show you how it works. So the first one is kind of like a GitHub Copilot style feature. Um, we want to add some language to the sales contract to help protect the customer's data. So you can see I kind of put an instruction here. This is actually just a plain language instruction. This isn't like some kind of special weird syntax. This is just a way to kind of tell the AI what we're looking for. We want to add, you know, three new clauses around the return and destruction of customer data, encryption of data, notification of unauthorized access. And I kind of gave it a heading here to lead off of. And then with quick draft, um, yeah, we're it's basically going to figure out how to fill this hole in the document um, based on the context of the document and all the documents it's seen before. Um, so this is kind of the traditional sort of GPT-3 um, style functionality. And we just generated some new clauses um, with um, some pretty good uh, legal language. You can also do things like you can do with LexPage, you can type plus, 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 and that will um, trigger the quick draft as well. Um, so maybe I want to regenerate that um, or something as well. And we usually, if you keep recasting, the temperature will go up. So you'll get more creative suggestions if you keep kind of um, drafting again. Any uh, questions so far? Uh, no, I just uh, think it's uh, impressive that you've managed to make so many uh, uh, spells. And I guess the- We're a spell uh, factory. <laughs> yeah, so, and and I, I'm sure you'll get to it, but uh, the fine tuning of the code and everything comes from uh, your own data sets or, or from uh, legal uh, databases? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, um, we don't use any customer data whatsoever for training today, um, but we do have access to our own uh, proprietary data sets. We'd been a legal tech company for uh, five years. So we have some of our own data sets that we had developed internally. And there are a lot of public databases like Edgar um, that we can use uh, for fine tuning as well. Great. Um, yeah, so that's an example of quick draft. Um, another thing I'll do is, um, yeah, just add like a late payment clause. So you don't need to add any instructions or anything like that. Um, you know, I could just say, okay, I want to add a late payment clause. And again, I could just type plus, plus, plus or hit draft. Um, and again, this is going to kind of uh, complete and fill in that hole in the document, um, which is super helpful um, for a lawyer that's trying to, you know, add some bespoke language um, to the contract. So you can see it's added a clause here with the 1.5% uh late payment interest rate um but yeah that's just scratching the surface there's a lot of other things we can do here um yeah what else would be interesting to show um we can also do yeah i really like this one called uh this email review so in this one um so looks kind of going to um try to produce uh oops sorry i clicked the wrong one well this is going to try to find missing clauses in the document so it's going to try to suggest to us um, anything that might be missing in the document um, that we could potentially add. So limitation of liability, governing law and jurisdiction, severability, assignment, independent contractors, non-solicitation. So um, yeah, it's, it's made a, a number of valid suggestions that are in fact not in this contract and written out these clauses in short form um, that are actually missing. So again, super helpful tool. Uh, lawyers love this one because spotting what's missing is really hard, especially if you have like a hundred or two page, 200 page contract and you're like, well, what's missing? You can't control F. Well, I guess if you have a list of things you can, but that's a really hard problem in legal review is finding what's missing. It's easy to see if something weird is there, um, but seeing what's not there is really tough. So um, this feature is really helpful there. Um, yeah, I think one of the ones that spells that impresses people most is the email format review. So this is kind of going to, 
generate an email similar to what you would send a client, um, kind of reviewing the contract and saying what you might want to push back on and things like that. Um, yeah, so uh, standard hosting agreements, that's the terms of agreement, scope, a few things you might want to push back on, uh, terms of use, confidentiality, payment terms, you might want to negotiate a lower rate, uh, push for a more flexible payment plan. Um, so pretty good. Um, and yeah, I could I could run it again and get kind of uh, different um, different perspectives on it and things like that. Um, and yeah, the other thing I can do is ask freeform questions. So I could ask a question like, um, uh, let's see. Um, actually, I'm just going to pull up another agreement here. So this is going to be an employment agreement. Maybe I want to ask something like, um, what is the most recent uh, change in the law in California that would impact uh, this agreement? Um, We'll see how it does. <laughs> this is all live, so, and we don't set the temperature to zero. So, okay. So sometimes you'll get that answer, but I can hit uh, the resend, uh, the resend button, and uh, yeah, okay. And uh, so it it does kind of correctly say that the most recent change in law that would impact this is uh, the CCPA, and um, this is an employment agreement. So I might ask a follow up question. You know, like, uh, you know, I thought uh, that only protected uh, consumers. Uh, does the CCPA also protect, you know, employees? Um, and yeah, similar to like a chat GPT um, style experience. Um, so is it okay. pulling that so, uh, data? So obviously it's parsing the contract itself and then pulling the uh, a public database of California laws and what they are when they were passed? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, this works in the same way ChatGPT works. So there is a cloud of information and knowledge about text and it's trying to come up with a response, which is um, the, uh, I guess, highest probability string of text that would come after that um, question. Um, and it's, yeah, this is, it's not always gonna be perfect, um, but uh, same, similar to ChatGPT, um, but, which is one of the reasons we only sell this to lawyers and paralegals right now. Um, but mm -hmm. to a lawyer and paralegal who can vet the information, have a good filter to say whether it's accurate or not, and be able to double check, um, it can be really helpful. Yeah. So it's a it's a lawyer's assistant slash research, researcher, not a lawyer itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, similar to how GitHub Copilot is for programmers, but still probably not at the state where it can uh, you know write full programs for non-programmers uh, reliably. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned a few, but in terms of the broader set of use cases or where you think the, the most uh, popular use cases might be, uh, what do you see it? Uh, what do you see, I guess, the spellbook being uh, particularly interesting to lawyers uh, to use or how they use it? Sure. I think our main use case right now is commercial contracting. Um, so, yeah, you have sales contracts moving around all the time for large deals and uh, yeah, lawyers need to review them on both sides oftentimes uh, to see if there are any, uh, you know, kind of red flags in there um, to adjust language to make sure that the contract um, is compliant to standard terms for the organization. Um, I think that's kind of our number one uh, use case right now. But we have people using us for all sorts of things from, you know, intellectual property and pat patent drafting to uh, what else, um, which isn't really a I would say our core use case whatsoever, um, but people are trying. Um, yeah, we have some people experimenting with litigation and other practice areas as well, but it's really um, geared towards contract drafting and review right now. And I guess relatedly, um, I'm, I'm, I know we've spoken about it a bit in the past, but in terms of the demand for this kind of technology from, you know, as you mentioned, lawyers, paralegals, groups like that, uh, uh, what sort of a demand or interest are you seeing from uh, them in in the uh, uh, spellbook? Yeah, it's been uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, like, yeah, if I look tired, it's because we've been uh, onboarding uh, waitlist uh, folks from our waitlist as fast as humanly possible and scaling up our team. Uh, but we 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 are not currently digesting the amount of demand that there is. So. Yeah, last week we onboarded around 35 law firms and in-house legal departments. Um, we have enough demand to onboard probably 100 per week. Wow. Um, 
at this point. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the demand is su super high and we're feeling it across the spectrum from small law firms, to large law firms to uh, large Fortune 100 companies um, who are looking to streamline kind of like their in-house legal um, process. Um, and we've been getting some uh, some questions, uh, some sure. of them related. Uh, is it uh, um, available to the public at all? I know it's aimed at lawyers, but is it available to the public for, uh, who want to maybe play with it for their own uh, uh, employment contracts or things like that? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, so it's not generally available to the public right now, um, just due to kind of safety and ethical concerns. And, you know, we work with OpenAI and Cohere and um, those companies are also concerned about, you know, how their technologies are being used and if they're being used safely. Um, and we do take that very seriously because legal advice is, um, yeah, it's, it's really important. And if you if you get these things wrong, it can have uh, pretty negative consequences. So we're being um, careful about how we, how we roll it out. And generally it is for legal professionals today. Um, we do occasionally make exceptions though. So if someone does have like, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some venture capitalists and investors who are playing with Spellbook to see if they can use it to help review, you know, some of the regular paperwork they do. And that's one exception we've made with a whole bunch of disclaimers and things like that. Sure. So um, if and someone has like a specific use case, you know, it's possible we might make an exception. And is it uh, is a platform on its own only, or is it uh, an API they can integrate to their own services, their own platforms? Um, so right now it's uh, Spellbook is a word add-in and that's the only place it's supported. Um, we're looking into doing kind of a, an add-in that would support Google Docs as well. Um, yeah, we haven't opened up the API at this point, um, but it is in the works. So we are very much hoping hoping to kind of make these AI services geared towards legal and fine-tuned towards legal um, available to others as time goes on. Um, and uh, uh, this may be beyond uh, the scope of what you guys are doing, but in terms of comparing it to other potential uh, legal uh, synthetic AI or, or AI used like this, has there been much in the way of uh, comparison to uh, uh, what's one that asked if it was uh, different from Watson, which has its own uh, metadata comparison uh, and ability to spot what's missing? Uh, so is it is it much different from Watson? Yeah, or I guess yeah. is there any uh, uh, comparison there? Yeah, uh, I haven't used Watson uh much myself so i'm not i'm not sure on that one um yeah. i know you know compared to the first wave of ai and legal um you know spellbook is just way more flexible and way less rigid um in terms of its capabilities um like 10, 10x more flexible um and si similar you know into mo similar to most domains um, I know Watson was meant to be much more generalized and flexible but I haven't uh, I haven't used it myself and I'm not super familiar with it um, and then just to wrap up last, uh, any uh, hints as to what comes next for you guys, as, as you okay. mentioned, you're onboarding quickly, I assume there's uh, several, at least uh, tentative plans of what comes next for uh, uh, Spellbook. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now we're scaling and just developing this thing and adding as many spells and improving our spells as fast as possible. Um, yeah, we're raising a bunch of money right now to just help us hire the people and scale out our team. Um, so that's exciting. And I think we'll, we'll just be scaling our team very quickly in the new year. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's the main thing. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's just like as a developer, um, it's a really exciting place to be. And I think no one really knows how to use this technology the best yet. So I expect our product is going to morph in all sorts of interesting ways and um, there really aren't great best practices yet so um, i'm super excited to just see our product evolve and take new shapes and new forms um as as we learn all of us learn you know how to use this technology um as best we can and what user experience really makes the most sense um, and i don't think any of us have any clue <laughs> clue yet no, really good. what's going to be Ideal. I think one of the other important things is action-based models. So models that are really geared towards not just text, but uh, triggering actions, um, actually having Spellbook go through a legal document, actually make the edits across the document in with track changes mode on, um, maybe having Spellbook actually send an email um, and take up or take other actions like searching other APIs for information and things like that. I think that's one of the, probably one of the biggest advancements over the next year we'll see is these more action-based approaches. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Scott. Really, really thank appreciate you. it. Synthesia.
Synthedia.substack.com, Synthetic Media, Virtual Humans, Voice Clones, Deep Fakes, AI Image and Text Generation News and more.